The time of resurrection is nearing, ushered in by the Herald of the Flame. But what does that mean? Who is the Herald of the Flame and who is being resurrected? But more importantly, have Athena's fortune misinterpreted the prophecy? Have they yet again started a chain of events leading to the resurrection of a mythical hero? Or a legendary villain? In the trailer for the Siren's Prize, Belle learns that whoever has been storing books in Stitcher Jim's lair has discovered a prophecy so to speak. The prophecy tells of the time of resurrection. It's unclear who exactly had predicted this, but we learn in the Heart of Fire novel that the ancients had dreams. Dreams of the future and of the dead. This is how they discovered the Sea of the Damned. But, more importantly, the ancients would record these prophecies if they were deemed important, with the others discarded. I believe this to be a vision manifested in the Sea of the Damned, where they weren't dreams per se, but a glimpse of the future. They believed in these prophecies so much so, that they had hidden away items of great power in order to defend the Sea of Thieves from things that would threaten it. The Sea of Thieves was the Ancients' home, before they up and left to the Sea of the Damned. The Ancients had always dabbled in magic, magic derived from the Merfolk. It was a pursuit that they followed to enrich their lives. It's very clear that they revered the idea of eternal life and paradise. The Sea of Thieves was such a place, free from the outside forces and those who would threaten the ancient people. The various curses in the Sea of Thieves today derive from the ancients messing with this magic, seemingly as a way to turn it into an eternal paradise for them. It seems as though this has an effect on people, with various contemporaries vying to enforce their view of paradise on the region. Besides the point, the ancients knew about Captain Flameheart. Well, they sort of knew what, but not who he is. The Ophelia was an ancient ship procured by the crew of the Morning Star, a fantastical weapon with the means to resist the various curses in the Sea of Thieves, but more importantly, Flameheart and the Burning Blade's weapon of choice, Cursed Cannonballs. The totem that would fit in its capstan would send out a pulse when the hull was struck by the cursed metal. This would also harm any being deemed cursed, including Skeleton and Ashen Lords. The Ancients seemed to predict they would need the ship to combat a malevolent being that would threaten the Sea of Thieves, but they had fled to the Sea of the Damned before this day. However, they would allow the new Guardians of the region to claim their prizes. This is where the Great Warrior comes in. The Great Warrior has many fantastic tales told about him, and was either the first or the greatest of his rank. The Great Warrior is said to have performed many inhuman feats, some more believable than others. One of the two that did stand out to me was the story about the food not satiating the infant warrior. It reads, It is said that when the great warrior was born, his infant cry was such that the setting sun briefly rose once more, to learn who had made this great commotion. By the time the sun had dared rise again, the great warrior was standing on two tiny feet, and had already ventured out of his home to see all that he could see. The child began to howl with hunger, and his cries enraged a mighty boar. It charged from the woods towards the warrior, eager to trample him underfoot. The boy grabbed the furious beast by its twin horns and tossed it straight into the cooking pot. There was a great feast, though the warrior ate but a few bites. The fight itself had sated him. We can draw a great parallel between the warrior and good old Captain Flameheart. Both seem to have an insatiable thrill for battle, and the food analogy is even noted in the novel too. The Burning Blade has allegedly removed its stove and cargo space to shed weight and allow the crew to shape the hull to cut through the waves. This makes it faster. At this point in the story, the crew of the Magpie's Wing were not aware of the early effects of the Skeleton Curse. The skeletons of the Sea of Thieves do require very small amounts of food, but this isn't required for them to function. Much like the Great Warrior, who could only be satisfied by a good fight and not any food, even the Mighty Boar's Flesh. The next story is an account of the Great Warrior's training. It reads as follows. Men and women came from far and wide to train the young warrior in the ways of the blade, but none could spar with him for long before they were bested. In desperation, the king sought out Patient Turtle, who was asleep on the seabed and asked for counsel. Who could be a worthy opponent for the great warrior? Patient Turtle sent for the warrior, and told him that he must face one whose skill and ferocity matched his own, and bade him to look to the water. The warrior saw his own reflection and raised his blade at once. He fought the water for ten days and nights, then returned to Patient Turtle, claiming victory. Sure enough, the warrior's face no longer stared back at him from the sea. His reflection had fled. Patient Turtle declared the warrior's training complete, and went back to sleep. This more so is a testament to his strength. No one could best the great warrior, even before his training. The key takeaway here is that the warrior fought his own reflection, as the only one who could match him in battle was himself, until he destroyed that part of it. This can have many meanings. Is the warrior's greatest weakness himself, or is it part of him? The other part is Flameheart. And no, not the physical skeleton lord himself, but the idea of him. Flameheart represents the other side of great strength, domination and victory is the way to show strength. Where the Great Warrior emboldens the other side of this, 
heroism and stoicism. If the Great Warrior is the Yin, then Flameheart is the Yang. Mike Chapman did confirm there was a connection between the two of them. While the connection isn't them being the same person, it does indeed exist. Could Flameheart be following in the footsteps of the Great Warrior? And maybe seeks his strength but not the benevolence that he embodied? Or is the connection a bit more physical? The ancients were fixated on eternal life, but what if, in their many attempts, they created something unholy and profane by mistake? Flameheart was cursed by chalices found in an obsidian casket. The gold hoarder was cursed by ancient gold. Mike also confirmed the curse takes form in different ways and depends on the character of the one inflicted. Flameheart grew strong and a fire sparked in his chest due to his burning fury, whereas the gold hoarder's greed and lust manifested in his golden bones. Flameheart embraces his curse. He doesn't tire, he doesn't rest, he doesn't need food. When he attacks Eli Slate in the novel, he is a force of nature, enjoying every moment of the hunt. He makes a very good point too. Eli's age is a hindrance when fighting a monster that never ages. It's also noted in the Athena's Fortune novel that the ancient's artifacts not only created great curses, but also granted great boons. What if the skeleton curse was originally intended for this? What if the ancients sought to bolster their strength with these artifacts in an attempt to emulate their great warrior, until it went wrong and caused people's skin to fall off? A weapon that has already fallen into the wrong hands. The great warrior was immensely strong, did not need food to sustain him, and possessed great resistance, just like the skeleton lords we see today. Flameheart is a manifestation of everything that went wrong, both in body and mind as they try to replicate the great warrior. What intrigues me most though, is the consequences look to be coming to bite them many years later. The great warrior is said to be the first to fight in times of war. With the time of resurrection looming, Flameheart's insatiable lust for battle will manifest in a great war. And when the fiery skeleton lord urges to fight the strongest opponents, this might come crashing down on Athena's fortune's head. And all the while, Captain Flameheart bides his time in the Sea of the Damned with his ancient prisoner, waiting, preparing, scheming, all to defeat his greatest adversary yet. And then nothing will stand between him and the Sea of Thieves. While all the world is burned.